Food for Thought is brought to you by Durango Party Rental. We put it all together perfectly. And the Wells Group, proudly serving Southwest Colorado for 29 years. of Aeolus, a new restaurant on Main Street in Durango. It's run by James Allred and Chris Kroll. James is the front of the house man, Chris is the chef. We're going to check out some great food, some great wine. Let's go. Hey, how's it going guys? Good evening, John. James, Good nice to see, to see you. you. Chris, John, welcome. my pleasure. Pleasure. The place is looking great. Really nice. One of the things I was noticing in here is the name's a little different than uh, than what I've seen around. What does it mean, and where to come from? <laughs> we had a fun time selecting the name. We uh, it, we were really looking for something local. Um, we were looking for a mountain because we both love mountains, and uh, we selected a 14,000 foot peak in our own neighborhood named Aeolus. Um, it's named for the Greek god of wind. And um, we just we want to be represent the pinnacle of Durango dining here. It's a big part of the name for us. Nice, and yeah, I assume you've climbed the mountain. I have not climbed the mountain yet. <laughs> it's on my list, though. Nice. Apparently, to ski next spring is what Chris is informing me. Oh, oh really? Thing. Can you ski it? Oh yeah. Really? You got to climb it? And, yes. Or is it helicopter? No, climb it. Nice. Yeah. Well, good for you guys. <laughs> Seems like you guys get along pretty well. Can you tell me how you got together as a team and? How long have you been working together? Yes, I was hired on as the executive chef to open Cosmopolitan uh, over six and a half years ago, and then was lucky enough to hire James about three and a half years ago, and then we quickly became partners, and um, <clears throat> very happily had the opportunity to buy the restaurant uh, back in November, and felt that we had to make a change, and the name represents that change, and very happy to be moving forward with him here in this fabulous uh, location. Nice, and what, um What's made, what makes this place a little different? I mean, why should people come here? So. Going for the total package. It's not just about the ambiance or the food. It's about tying it all together and making a great experience for someone. We talk about making memories, and that's what we're kind of wanting to do, is we want to have people come in here and leave, wow, not just going, we enjoyed the food or we enjoyed the service, but wow, we really had a special moment there. And we get to share that with people, and that's, that really makes it neat for us, too. Nice. So tell me a little bit about uh, your background. I mean, how long have you been a chef, any education, and what, what do you like to cook? Oh, sure. I've been uh, cooking for 25 years now. I uh, went to the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York, right out of high school. Uh, very lucky to have known that I've always wanted to be a chef. And um, tried to push myself to work in some fabulous restaurants to learn and grow throughout my career. Taking the opportunities to work in a different style of cuisine to learn that, to add to my repertoire and my knowledge. Um, I love the Durango area because of the fantastic local producers that we have. Uh, I moved down here, been living in Durango for about 12 years now. I've been living in Aspen for almost 10 and mm -hmm. chefing up there. And uh, one of the things that really kind of rang true to me when I moved to Durango was the fabulous local products that we have, the meats, the amazing farmer's market, and the great local community here that we're very happy loves to come in and dine with us. One of the things uh, you had mentioned a little bit before we started was uh, the rooftop. Oh. I heard it's quite uh, quite spectacular. Is it okay if we go take a look at that? It'd be great. It's a year-round rooftop uh, dining area for us, so we're very fortunate to be able to offer that at any season of the year. Um, offers great views of the mountains, and um, in the summer it's amazing, and in the winter it's equally special, especially when it's snowing out. Oh, I bet. And you can rent that private parties and stuff like that? Indeed. It's a wonderful place to have a private party or just a small private, you know, gathering 10 people, just a family outing or right. something. It's a really nice space. Cool. Can we check it out? I'd love to show it to you. Let's do it. Looks like a setup, guys. I think uh, 
You wanted to surprise me a little bit. This is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous up here. Great view, great ambiance. We're in the middle of winter time. It's warm up here. This is great. And what are we eating here? Oh, well, this is our uh, scallop and prime, <coughs> prime rib bacon appetizer with uh, three seared scallops, some prime rib bacon that we make in house, a sweet potato chip, and some delicious honey truffle, honey mustard truffle sauce. We have some hamachi sashimi here with two kinds of sauces and our famous lobster corn dogs. Sweet. Well, let's dig in. Cool. Wow. Delish. Is there any one influence that you had, any particular chef or cuisine that influences you the most? Um, I think, you know, a, a good chef is, um, you know, a culmination of his cooking experience throughout the years and there's many different chefs and places I've worked throughout my career that provide me inspiration but a lot of it is the product that I'm working with and I love the local product that we have here the fabulous steaks from East Pines Ranch out north of Cortez um, some of the local farmers like Dave Benga and Mancus and Chuck and Rosie at Stone Free Farms and the whole family at James Ranch we love to get their products in because it makes my job really easy they give me fantastic fresh ingredients and I just try to treat them with respect and put them on the plate and show them some love and one thing I really am proud of is that the <clears throat> excuse me the farmers often come in to dine with us here and enjoy the products that they bring to me in the back door and it really warms my heart to see them in the dining room and join with us James you picked the champagne out are you the person responsible and uh, watching over the wine, uh, wine list and wine cellar? I am. It's uh, probably the most uh, exciting and fun part of my job, I'd have to say. I get to try a bunch of different wines from around the world. Um, we try to make our wine list a little bit more unique than any of the other restaurants in the area mm -hmm. by offering um, a lot of different glass pours and a lot of different varietals that uh, you don't see in other restaurants in the area. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely a passion of mine. Um, I spent about seven years in Eugene, Oregon, and um, that was a, really a fun, special time in my life, but I was able to go out to a lot of vineyards up there and mm -hmm. learn a lot about Pinot Noir in particular, and right. really uh, developed a passion for wine at that point in time. Well, I'll tell you what, the food here is out of this world. The bacon, I've never tasted anything like that. It's fun. It's, <laughs> it's delicious, <laughs> and it goes great with the wine. Can't wait to see what the main course is. And Chris, what about you? As far as if you were going to sit down and you're hungry and somebody could prepare food like you prepare it uh, in your kitchen and you sat down and said, this is what I would like tonight, what would you have? Oh, well, one of my favorite things actually is to come into my own restaurant and eat with my family. I often have trouble deciding what I'm going to eat when I come in here, just like a normal diner would, even though I'm involved in the food on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I love to have is the prime rib two ways. It's a, fantastic signature dish that we created here many years ago. Well guys, what do you think? Take it downstairs and check out the main course? Sounds great. Excellent. Looking forward Excellent. to it. When we come back, Chris takes us into the kitchen where we cook up a feast fit for a king. Welcome back to Food for Thought. Chris has invited me into the kitchen for a behind the scenes look of Iolas. Okay. What do we got working here? Well, tonight, we're going to be enjoying our prime rib two ways. Going to finish cooking this on the grill. What are the two ways? Uh, we have a, a center cut that is marinated and grilled to order, which I just put on the grill there. And then we also have a smoke roll, which we take and separate out in our butchering process and smoke with some dry spices on the outside of it. Give it a delicious and unique flavor there. We also have our Hawaiian blue marlin tonight. This is our fish feature, blown in fresh from Hawaii, some delicious fish that we're going to be doing some Asian flavorings on tonight. Some red curry mashed potatoes, a fun little crab salad with mango and avocado and daikon sprouts, a little bit of tempura broccolini on there. Now that piece of fish doesn't look like the fish that you'd buy in a little packet. No, no, we get this fish flown in fresh for us and we butcher it in-house. Um, I use my um, knowledge that I learned as a sushi chef and I worked at a sushi chef in one of my past lives as a chef so to speak, and I use the butchering knowledge to get a fantastic piece of fish on the plate for our guests. We take um, a little bit of extra time and trim more than we normally would to just get a perfect piece of fish on the plate that looks a little different, we can slice, and we try to buy the best quality fish, sashimi great quality fish, so we can serve a nice piece of fish that's mid-rare to you on the plate. So have our lobster tail that we're gonna butter poach. 
for our surf and turf. Now you're making these three dishes. Is there anything uh, that's personal about these, or? Oh, all of these dishes have come along with some, you know, some some interesting parts of my career, and you know, kind of bringing it together here. And the surf and turf, you know, so many great fine dining restaurants have a surf and turf, and you know, I think it's a really, you know, fun thing to be able to have as a diner. You know, a little bit of meat and a little bit of, you know, lobster tail in this case that we slow cook in butter. And I mean, that's just delicious, and we buy the best quality meats that we can. So we have our beef tenderloin right over here that we're grilling up. And what are you going to serve the uh, fish with? Uh, we're going to be doing some red curry mashed potatoes tonight. Mm -hmm. So we take some Thai red curry, a little coconut milk, and some locally grown potatoes, and we mash those up together, give us some really yummy flavors. And then we're going to have a crab salad on there with some delicious red crab, avocado, mango, and daikon sprouts. Then we're gonna do a Thai style vinaigrette. It kind of be like a, a dipping sauce that you get for some Thai style spring rolls or something. Yes, yes. So I use that kind of the same formula, but made into a vinaigrette. We have <clears throat> rice wine vinegar, lime juice, cilantro, mint, um, basil in there, a little bit of Thai fish sauce, and a little bit of chili paste as well. So we have some, some sweet, some sour, some fresh flavors, a little bit of heat to round it up in the end there. Excellent. So these are looking good here. I think we're probably ready to start our plating. Okay. Joel, if you would, sir. So uh, tell us what you're doing. Sure, sure. Right now I'm getting our, uh, our crab salad together. We have some diced up mango, avocado, and some daikon radish sprouts. And then some delicious red crab, the deep sea red crab. It um, comes from the very deep part in the ocean. So it lives in cold waters, so it has a delicious fat content to it and a phenomenal flavor. This is gonna be our Thai vinaigrette that I was mentioning earlier. Right. All those great flavors and herbs in there. I'm gonna put a little bit on our salad here. And then we'll use a little bit more of that to dress on our plate. Excellent. And what do you use to spice it up to uh, make it hot? Uh, we use a little chili garlic paste, similar to uh, sriracha. Very nice. And what vegetable is that right there? That is broccoli. Uh huh. Kind of like a baby broccoli. Hurry up. Are you getting hungry? <laughs> Just love <I'm> salivating here. <laughs> Excellent. Let's get this lobster tail on the plate here. Nestle that right on top of our baby bok choy. A little bit of our lobster butter sauce. Right yeah. over the top here. That's not on a lot of diets, is it? Yeah. And then our second part of our prime rib two ways. Our smoked part of it. Bringing that right over to our plate here. And then we have some sauces to go on our plates here. A peppercorn sauce to go with our filet on the surf and turf. We're also gonna use some of that same sauce to go with our smoked part of our prime rib two A's that we use in the center cut of them to our demi-gloss sauce. That's beautiful. That's quite a presentation. Can we sit down and eat it now? Please. All right. We gotta get James over here. He's gonna miss out on something good. Now you told me what you're preparing, and I saw what you're preparing, and I want to eat all of them. I can't, but which one should I have? I think you should have our fish feature this evening, and uh, James will enjoy our surf and turf, and I'm looking forward to our prime rib two A's. And why am I having the fish? Uh, I think the fish is gonna be excellent tonight with the uh, Suckliff Riesling that we have poured for you, and I think it's a, it's a, fun, uh, a fun dish that we have created for you tonight, excellent. lots of flavors. Cool, well I'm gonna dig in. Excellent. You guys all set? Looks excellent, yeah. thank you. Cheers, Again, gentlemen. one more time. Cheers. After the break, we feast. Welcome back. Chris has finished preparing the meal, and it's a doozy. 
Well, the wine goes delicious with the fish. Excellent. And what kind of wine is this? It's a Sutcliffe uh, Riesling. It's a dry Riesling. The grapes are from Hotchkiss, Colorado. And it's uh, vented in, outside of Cortez, Colorado in McElmo Canyon. <coughs> I hope it goes well with that Kajiki. It's delicious. Perfect. Excellent. Perfect. And what did you pour for uh, Chris? Chris is drinking an Italian red. It's a Campo Forian. It's a Corvina grapes that have been dried in a Rapasso style where they're placed on mats and air dried. It gives a nice robust flavor to the wine with great balance and good tannin structure. It should go great with this prime rib two ways. It does. And you're having your uh, <clears throat> favorite? I went with a little Pinot Noir, yes. Goes, uh, goes great with most everything to me, but definitely goes great with the surf and turf. Mm -hmm. um, the nice, rich flavors of the lobster. It goes great with the steak. Seems like for a Monday night, you guys were pretty busy. So the community seems to be uh, pretty psyched that you're here. You're getting good feedback, huh? It's been, uh, it's been amazing feedback. Uh, people coming in and just having a great time. Really happy to be here. Happy to be part of the experience here at Eolus. And, enjoying uh, Chris's awesome food and this beautiful restaurant, this facility that we have to offer here. And you making them feel, uh, feel comfortable, right? Well, just <laughs> doing the best I can. Make them enjoy their experience. I'm tasting a little bit of a uh, little hot in the potatoes. Some uh, Thai red curry in this mashed potatoes with some coconut milk. Delicious. The local potatoes that we mash up in there. <clears throat> I feel it's going to go really well and balance that fish. and give a little bit of heat and get you ready for that next bite. Yeah, get Bright, your... clean flavors on the vinaigrette there. It's gonna be perfect with that Riesling as well. Get your attention. Exactly. It's very good. Very Definitely. Good. I think one thing that, um, you know, pleasure to work with James and, you know, I think my passion in the kitchen and to help, you know, kind of drive the restaurant and then James to help kind of, you know, steer it up here in the wheelhouse and us coming together is, you know, been a great thing. So happy to have started work with him a few years ago and the events of the summer and, Getting back in here, the opportunity to, to buy the Cosmo and turn it into Eolus as mm -hmm. it is now, and people's reaction, and I think that's really a great testament to, you know, the hard work that we put in here, and you know, we have a, you know, more of a fine dining cuisine and a fine dining atmosphere, but the, the comfort level that James and the whole front of the house staff brings to the whole atmosphere of the place, you know, makes it more Durango, mm -hmm. and you know, the wonderful different walks of life that we have here in Durango and different people and they can all come in here and you know feel special when they're in here eating you know many different things from our fabulous local burgers to you know the fish special that you're having now which is excellent i gotta ask you guys one question why aren't you open for lunch <laughs> well we like to ski <laughs> well i like to ski chris likes to snowboard <laughs> uh, okay i thought somebody had mentioned that and i said that's pretty cool but that's a very durango lifestyle decision and i'm sure a lot of the uh People in the community can appreciate that very much. So, but it's worthwhile waiting for dinner to come here. We want to focus on the, the finer things that we do here, and that's uh -huh. our dinner service. And you know, I learned many years ago <clears throat> as a young chef that you know, living in resort and you know, mountain communities is a great opportunity to enjoy your daytime mountain biking, hiking, skiing, things like that during the day, and then come in and do your work in the evening. Worked out well for me. Did you learn to be a sushi chef while you were in Durango? Mm. No, I learned, I worked at a um, restaurant called Matsuhisa in Aspen, which is uh, run and owned by Nobu Matsuhisa, a world famous Japanese sushi chef. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a point in my career where I was really ready to learn some new things. And I was executive chef of a fabulous place in Snowmass called Kriblunik, where we specialized in wild game. It was a very cool, um, unique rustic log cabin, and we had dog sled rides there. And a, very, you know, fabulous place to work and come dine at and was really just ready for a change and had always been fascinated by sushi and, you know, more of an Asian style cuisine. Right, right. So I took the opportunity to start and work there as a line cook and worked my way through the kitchen and was able to, you know, work with some of the sushi chefs and try to gain some knowledge from them, which was not an easy thing to do. Right. You definitely have to prove yourselves to the Japanese sushi chefs to let them know that you're worthy of passing on the knowledge. What's interesting here, I'm getting kind of full, but I was hoping you might have a little something, something for dessert. Oh, definitely. We have a fabulous um, local pumpkin cheesecake tonight, as well as an apple tart. And uh, I thought we'd also do a flourless chocolate cake for you. And uh, we have an in-house pastry chef. We make all of our bread, hamburger buns, and pastries and ice creams daily. So I think it'd be a great time for you to enjoy those with us. 
Excellent. And you were saying a dessert wine with that also or some kind of We'll dessert. leave that up to James. I'm sure he'll be able to pick out something that'll go perfect with all of our items that we've chosen here. The challenge is on. <laughs> okay. Chris laid down the gauntlet. Let's see if you can uh, come up to that. That's great. I am looking forward to the dessert, but I want to know what's the deal with the wines? What are we talking about here? And why? who has what? Well, Chris, Chris said it was, it was the gauntlet, right? It was the challenge to the dessert pairing. So uh, we've uh, gone with a few different wines there for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, white chocolate pumpkin cheesecake there. So the uh, Taylor 20 year old port. And uh, that should be great with that cheesecake. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris has the flourless uh, chocolate cake and um, it's gluten free, pretty neat. But I've gotten uh, sun dried Shiraz for Chris here. It's not a port because it's not from uh, Portugal. This is from Australia, made in the port style, as it were. Okay. A uh, very rich, dark uh, mm -hmm. wine. And then I've gone uh, with some Sauterne, which is a dessert wine from France, and uh, traditionally a uh, Simeon is the grape. And uh, it's kind of interesting. They let it rot on the vine. It's called the Noble Rot. It's very right. sweet, dark, raisiny essence of it. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be apple tart. Wow. You can eat all that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Pretty full. Wow. <laughs> Looks delicious. That was unbelievable. And I just can't believe that's dessert after a full meal. That looks... I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish it. <laughs> all right. But you said you rode your bike today. That's I why. I did ride my bike to work and you, today. <laughs> to work. Nice. What about tonight? I'm going to ride it home, too. Yes. Wow. All right. <laughs> And don't tell me you live up the street uh, off of Maine here. No, I live by Chapman Hill. <laughs> uh oh, you got a ways to go. Very nice. Can't wait to try this. Again, one more time, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Very nice. So, John, you have our white chocolate and local pumpkin cheesecake. It's a James Ranch Cinderella pumpkin that we've layered with white chocolate and sour cream for a classic cheesecake, a little bit of white chocolate and dark chocolate sauce there, almond tweel cookie. James is enjoying the caramel apple pie made with local Got Brothers apples, and it has a scoop of ricotta ice cream on there and some whipped cream, and I have a flourless chocolate cake with a Grand Marnier mousse and a raspberry compote. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. This is a great evening, and anybody watching this show is going to be here. You can bet on that. Thanks again, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you, John. James, it's my pleasure. It's a pleasure to have Chris, you here really Thank nice. you for enjoying thank, with oh, us. Oh, my goodness. It was great. Thanks so much. You guys take care. Thank you. All right, we'll see you. Have a great night. Woo! That was unbelievable. I don't know what was better, the fish, the scallops with the uh, homemade bacon or the dessert and the wines. So all it amounts to is if you want a great meal with a really nice ambiance, some great people to cater to you, this is the place to go. This is Eolus and I'm John. Good night. Food for Thought is brought to you by Durango Party Rental. We put it all together perfectly. And The Wells Group, proudly serving Southwest Colorado for 29 years.